Welcome to Dark Horse Auto and Diesel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a radiator on a 99 to 0373 power stroke. Because mine's cracked. First thing we want to do is come up here and remove this carefully if the engine's been on recently. Make sure there's no pressure. And we're removing that so that we can drain the coolant out of the radiator faster. Next get yourself some clean jugs and I've attached a hose to the bottom of the drain on mine to better control where it goes and then get a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket and stick right on there and hopefully if somebody wasn't stupid before you and tightened it way too much you can just loosen it by hand. And now we wait. Next we'll come under here under the passenger side of the truck and take these radiator hoses off here. And when you pull these hoses off be prepared for a bit of a mess. Make sure you have a good bucket or something handy. And while we're waiting for the coolant to drain, we can come up here and start taking our jacking tools off. This will just come off by hand here. And then we'll take those two screws out, those two there, and there's one up here. Get that out of the way. And take that one out. And these are all eight millimeter. Well, that's not good. We'll come back to that one. be throwing that one away and getting a different one. There's also another screw right underneath here that I almost forgot about. Right there. That one's eight millimeter also. Now we can go ahead and move that back a little bit. And then all this lifts out. Then we'll take these two screws off here, there, and then up there. Those hold the coolant bottle on. Those are eight millimeter also. Then we'll take this hose off the top of the radiator. By this point, it should be drained down enough that you won't make a mess. And now we can take it and just kind of swing it off to the way over here. That should be far enough out of the way for us. Shouldn't have to pull it all the way out. Next we'll take the fan shroud loose and this is where you're going to be screwed because these are 10 millimeter sometimes. Sometimes they're also 8. In my case they're 8. So there's one there and then one over here on this side and Apparently mine is missing, so convenient. Wow, that was really loose. Wonder if that's why the other one's missing.
Then once you've got it loose, just kind of lift up a little bit on it. And there's two little tabs down at the bottom that it locks into. And then just push it back as much as you can until you got enough clearance. You can see right down there and right there. Focus. Anyway, that's where the bottom of the fan shroud locks into. So get that slit out of the way, and then we can work on some other stuff. Now we'll go ahead and pop our upper radiator hose off, and that should be 5 16 or 8 millimeter. <clears throat> Next we can come under here and take our transmission cooler lines off. One there, and then one over there. Uh, these are 5 8 here, and depending on how rusty they are, you may need to back this up here, and that'll be inch and a sixteenth. I'm going to attempt to show you that on camera, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And when you take these off, be prepared for a little bit of transmission fluid to come out. I usually use earplugs to plug them. That one's coming off. Then we'll get our earplug rolled up here and ready to go. So if yours is anything like mine, you're going to have at least one that doesn't want to come off. And what you can do is what I've done in the past, and I just found a nice straight piece here and just took a tubing cutter and just cut it off. And when I reassembled it, you can see I put a piece of hose on there and double clamped it at both ends to keep it from leaking. So what I'm going to do is just unhook it here and lift this part out with the radiator. And I should have enough clearance up there and then I'll just deal with getting that fitting off once I have it out of the truck where I can work on it a little easier. Now we can go ahead and get the radiator lifted out of here. If your lines came off like mine didn't, you'll have a much easier time. So I'm gonna be on the struggle bus here for a minute. Well, it wasn't too bad until I hit the fan clutch. That didn't work, so I ended up just destroying that line. I'll have to make a new one. Now I should be able to get this out. So if you end up in the situation that I'm in and completely screwed up one or possibly both of your lines, uh, these are 3 8 outside diameter. And you can see here that it is double flared. So we'll be making a new piece like this later. I'm going to try to straighten that out so I can try to make it to match outside of the truck, but we'll see how that goes. Probably about as well as taking this off did. All right, so now we can get our brand new, or in my case, brand used radiator stuck back in here. I had a new one ordered, but because there's part shortages on everything now, apparently. It was an eight to 10 week wait for a new one. And I don't have that much time because this truck is my source of income. So once you get it down in there, you'll feel the need to drop it down into some little tabs down there. Just like these things here, there's two of those on the bottom and they line up with some rubber grommets. I'll show you that here in a second. So this one's on the passenger side of the truck. You can see how it's dropped down into there. And you'll usually feel it from up top if you're paying attention to what you're doing, but it's still a good idea to 
come down here and take a look just to make sure yep, that one's in. Next we'll go ahead and put our jack tool brackets back on because these are actually what holds the top of the radiator in place. This hole and that little nub there. And I know we pulled them off as one unit, but I like to put them back on separate just to avoid some frustration with lining them back up. line these back up and pop them back down in there. Now we can get the cowl put back on and like I said at the beginning of the video there is little tabs down there. Right there's one and guess it's broken off on this one. Awesome. Well, there's another one. It's supposed to be about right there. Didn't realize mine was missing. Oh well. find another screw for this side. Nice thing about having gone through multiple of these trucks. There's one. And there's another. Score. There's a whole bunch in there. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our hoose. And by the way, if you don't have one of these hoses already that goes around the belt, this is a fantastic time to go ahead and replace it with one that is because the normal belt, or because the normal hose runs straight through here and you have to remove the hose to change the belt, which is really inconvenient if you shred a belt on the highway like I've done before, because then you lose half your coolant. So, get one of these, they're like 20 bucks, worth it. Next we can get our reservoir put back into place, and since I'm an idiot, I forgot that there's a hose that gets attached right underneath here, so we have to pull this back off. Don't put that on yet. Yeah, definitely do the passenger side one, just so it holds everything pretty much in place, but leave this one off for now. So now we can get this put back into place and just keep in mind that the hose runs underneath the little tab like that, which I don't think you can really screw that up because it won't go on otherwise. So, kind of get it worked back down in there best you can. Well, I got hose hung up on stuff, but we'll go ahead and install this hose and then we'll come back to it. Now 
now we can put this piece back on. Now we can come back underneath the truck and get all these hoses put back on. Ah. And make a mess again. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our transmission lines, or line in my case, and now's a good time to make sure that your drain is all the way closed also. Let's snug these up. I believe the proper torque spec for flare fittings, I want to say was one or two flats of the hex part, one or two flats past where it touches. So basically, you know, a third of a turn once once it's hand snug. So it's still moving just a little bit. There it's touching. So we got a flat there. Two might be too much, I don't know. Yeah, two's gonna be too much. Just go about maybe one flat past snug. Just use your head. Now we can go ahead and get our coolant reservoir put back in place. Nothing special here, just the little guy here up top. Don't snug that down completely yet. Get these put into place down here. Then we get this crap put back on. And then this guy here. Now is a great time to do a coolant flush if you've never done one before. One of these years I might make a video on that, but I've already done one on this truck, so I'm not going to. So now I'm gonna start dumping the coolant back in. Now as you're pouring this in, I drained a little, little under five gallons out, and this is the third gallon that I'm putting in now, and it looks like it's getting full. As you're pouring this in, it's got a bunch of air that's going to have to work out, and you may not be able to get it all back in until after you start it the first time. Just know that that's normal. All right, all mine seem to go back in, plus I put about another, I don't know, half gallon or so in because obviously I'd lost some on the ground. Now, keep in mind, to keep some coolant with you for the next couple of days after you're driving because this is probably going to go down a little bit as all the air pockets work out of the engine and the whole cooling system. So just be aware that, you know, next couple times you shut the truck off and before you start it to make sure you check this and add as necessary. Obviously only add it if it's cold. Now we can fire it up and wait for it to warm up. Checking for leaks in the process. We want to wait till the trans gets a little bit warm too, then we'll check the transmission fluid. Once you got everything topped off and you confirm that there's no leaks, go ahead and drive around the block and enjoy. One last step I almost forgot, the most important one. Celebration beer.